Hey everybody, I want to show you how to use a material parameter collection. It came up in reference to how to make a bunch of things disappear at one time, but it's actually useful for way more cases than that, so let me jump right in. If you go to your materials folder, this is just the demo starter content scene. In the materials folder are all my materials. I don't have to put this asset here, but it makes sense for me, so I'm going to right click, go to materials and choose material parameter collection. And then I'll call it my MPC and I'm gonna double click it. A material parameter collection is just a collection of material parameters as the name implies. So let's look here, we have either scalar, single values or vector, multiple values that we can use here. So I'm gonna click on plus to add a scalar value for this first example, we'll talk about the question that came up, which is how to fade off multiple objects, but you can use this for anything in your material. So I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to open up my first index here and I'll give it a name. We'll call this fade. And I'll set the default value to one because it's going to be my opacity of my object. And we'll just default it to one to begin with. And that's really all we'll do for now. We'll come back here later and show how you could even change colors of multiple things at one time. So, but for now, let's just hit save and close this. So that's my first entry in this table of values, the MPC. Now let's go to, for example, the chair first and open up its material. And let's set this up to be able to fade off the chair, similar to how we faded the character in the earlier video. First, we need to open up this opacity mask field. So I'm going to go and change my blend mode to masked. And if you recall in the other video, we needed a dither temporal, this little trick to do what we needed in that case. And the input for this, rather than have a value that we just manually have to modify, we're going to grab the value from the MPC. And that's the beauty of this system. So I'm gonna right click and I'm going to type call for a collection parameter. So this means you're going to get your value from that collection. And you have to tell this node what collection you want. Because I had it already selected, it grabbed my MPC. But you can also change it here. Or if it comes in and there's nothing here because you didn't have it pre-selected, just click on the drop down and grab your material parameter collection. Then you also need to tell it what parameter out of that MPC do you want to use here. And I want to use the only one I have currently, which is fade. And I'm going to wire that into my dither. Its default value is one, so my opacity at this point should be one. I'm going to save that. So my chair material opacity is going to be driven by this value in my MPC. We'll see in a minute how to use it, but let's also set up the table to use the same parameter. This is the beauty of it. You can use that parameter in multiple materials and control it in one place. So I'm going to open up the table, do the same thing, set this to masked, add a dither node, connect that to my opacity mask, then go get my material parameter collection input. So I'm going to right click, do a collect another collection parameter input. It defaulted to my MPC because it's selected in my content browser. I'm going to connect this to here and I'm going to tell it it's erring because I haven't told it what parameter I want to use out of it yet. I want to use the fade parameter. And now the table is set up. If I go back to my level here and I want to as the original request was fade off multiple objects in one simple method. I'm going to make a new level sequence at the content level just quickly. Not going to be too organized here just for speed double click. So here is my level sequence where I want to control that. Now in the previous video I grabbed the individual character and brought in a reference to the material directly for that character and then faded a parameter that I set up. But now with the MPC, what I can do is I'm going to bring my sequencer here for a second so I can go into my materials, grab my MPC, and the MPC is what we're actually animating. And that will push the changes into each place where the values are being used. So bring this back down here. So the MPC, I want to go grab a parameter from the MPC. So I click here and I only have one again. It's the fade 
And now, here is my fade at a value of one. I'll go out a few frames, keyframe this to zero, and my objects disappear because they're wired into that dither node. All right, so now I can fade off multiple things at one time. Now that is just one use of the MPC. Let's take a look at what if we want to use a vector or a color, which is actually a good thing to talk about because there's some tricks related to that we need to be aware of. So I'm going to go back to the materials, going to open up my MPC, and I'm going to go to the vector parameter and add a parameter here. I'll just call this my color and you get four values here now this is important to notice there's four values and we may not need four in our material so we'll address that when we get there so let's set a default value here this will be the default when we use it let's just keep it easy and just make the color red and we'll keep an alpha of one and let's go ahead and save that so we just have a generic my color that we chose here in the MPC. And I'm going to close that and go into my chair. This is the orange of the chair. Now I don't want to use that orange. I want my MPC. I want to be able to keyframe this value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, add a collection parameter here. And I want to set my MPC to grab my color. We had set the default as red. Now we'll get a little bit of an error here, but we can work around that. Let's connect this to our input instead of the orange. And you'll see there's an error. And the error is, I have a float three and a float four. So this has four parameters. This only has three parameters. So what we can do in this case is we can just kick out that alpha channel by using a node that you'll probably need to write down because it's easy to forget what it's called. And the node you want to add is called component mask. And it defaults to just letting the first two parameters go through. So we're still going to get an error, right? Because if we select this, it's showing the R can go through, the green can go through, but the blue is blocked. So I'm going to add that. Now, just the RGB are being passed through and going into your B input instead of the orange. So now when I save this, and go back to my level and I turn my opacity back on in my sequencer here now the color of the chairs is red now that can be animated here as well because I'm using the MPC in my sequencer so I'm going to add in another parameter of my color in here so here's my color here's fade and let's ditch the fade for now because we're just focusing on the one object and so my color is keyed here at red and let's just go to frame 30 and we'll change the color here and then maybe go a little bit more add another value there and this is just a matter of changing colors so now we've animated by animating the MPC's value it's pushing into the other values and I can modify that and again the beauty here is what if I want this table to also change colors and to match the chair I can use that same MPC value should be pretty straightforward here this is the orange of the table again tab collection parameter go get it my color we need the component mask to enable the blue as well kick out the orange save that and now your table is also using the same color parameter so you can probably find multiple uses of the MPC it's really just a table of values that you're using to push into as many different materials you want and you can control them all in your sequencer by just animating whichever value you want to change Hope that all makes sense. Hope you find some good use cases for this and see you in the next video.